Hello there, welcome to the News on Nepal Television. I am Rojina Rai, starting with the headlines first. Prime Minister Dahal leaving for New York tomorrow to lead a 10-member Nepali delegation to the 78th session of the UN General Assembly. National Children's Day being observed today. President urges all three tiers of government to implement legal and constitutional provisions on children's rights. North Korean leader Kim extended his visit to Russia by several days, expected to oversee a display of Russian worship and visit several factories. Aid teams are battling to help survivors and locate a date five days after devastating floods hit eastern Libya up to left with Indian Sunday. Welcome back. Now we have the news in detail. Prime Minister Puspa Kamal Dahal is leaving for New York tomorrow, leading a 10-member Nepali delegations to the 78th session of the UN General Assembly being held at the UN headquarters in New York. Prime Minister Dahal is scheduled to address the UNGA on September 21st. The theme of the general debate of the 78th UNGA has been chosen as rebuilding trust and reigniting global solidarity. Accelerating action on the 2030 Agenda and its uh, sustainable development goals towards peace, uh, prosperity, progress and uh, sustainability of uh, all. Prime Minister Dahan will attend the opening session of the general debate of the 78th UNGA and attend the reception being hosted by the President of the United States, Joe Biden, on September 19. According to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, while in New York, Prime Minister Mr. Dahan will also address the UN Sustainable Development Goals Summit and the Climate Emission Summit, among others, on the sideline of the UNGA. Prime Minister Dahan will have a meeting with the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and hold a bilateral meetings with his counterparts from various countries. Prime Minister Dahan will be accompanied by his daughter Ganga Dahal, Foreign Secretary Bharat. Raz Powder and other senior officials of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Now to the further development, the 59th National Children's Day is being observed across the country today. The National Children's Day is being marked by organizing several programs on the theme Investing in Our Future means investing in our children. The United Nations General Assembly had endorsed the covenant on Children's Rights on 20 November 1989. Nepal passed the Convention on 14 September 1990. The day then has been marked as the Children's Day. The Nepal Constitution has guaranteed overall development of children by defining children's rights as fundamental rights. The Constitution has also included the arrangements related to child protection, child preservation, child child development and child participation. As per the commitment made in the UN Child Rights Convention 1989 and other international instruments, the Nepal government, government has formulated and implemented its laws and policies accordingly. Minister for Women, Children and Senior Citizen and the Chairperson of National Child Rights Council, Surendra Raz Acharya, expressed his ministry's commitment to implement the constitutionally guaranteed child rights. He also highlighted the coordinated roles of the federal, provincial and local government for the protection and the promotion of children's rights. A challenge has emerged to effectively protect and promote child rights in a view of of the changing technology, urbanization, worldwide values and circumstances. While a country is celebrating 59th National Children's Day, child marriage and giving birth in early years are still prevalent in Baitari district of Sudupasim province. 
Although the government endorsed the policy to abolish a child marriage within 2030 and uh, having prompt implementation, there is no sign of changes in the number of child marriages after all. As per the information obtained by the health office in the district, more than 1,100 girl a child are becoming mother in their early 20. Data has not only displayed the increasing number of child marries, it has been also creating a fragile the health condition of girl child. According to the health assistant of Sri Kot Health Post Saraswati Bhatta, this ill practice in the society has not completely disappeared despite conducting a various awareness campaign across the district. However, there has been little change in the parents' mindset forcing their child to get married early and early. The law of the country of Nepal has not allowed marriage before 20 and it is not an act according with the law of the nation. We still have more updates on the side. Stay with us. Time for a short break. Welcome back. You are on Nepal Television News. Now we have remaining updates. The meeting of House of Representatives has been called for 1 p.m. today. During today's session, Speaker Devraj Gimiri will address various key matters. Speaker Gimiri will begin by reading the correspondence received from the Office of the Prime Minister and the Council of Ministers. Furthermore, in accordance with the Rule 215, Clause 1 of the Rules of the House of Representatives 2079, Speaker Gimiri will also announce a vacant seat within the House of Representatives. This vacancy arises under Clause of Article under clause of, a of Article 89 of the Constitution of Nepal following the demise of CPNUM leader Subhas Nemwang, who was elected from Ilam constituency number two. With the spread of a seasonal flu at the community level, number of patients reaching the hospital has increased significantly. Data shows that the number of influenza patients has been increasing every passing week. According to the National Public Health Laboratory, 35 persons have been confirmed to be infected with inf influenza after testing 140 samples collected from all over the country in last one week. Symptoms such as cold, fever, and head ag appear when one is infected with influenza. According to doctors, seasonal influenza is a type of viral infection. Uh, Dr. Sir Badurpun said that influenza, which is spreading at the community level, causes health complications as well. As the seasonal flu tends to affect senior citizens, chronic patients, children, diabetic, high blood pressure, or heart patients. Doctors have suggested to be cautious at the same time. Now we have updates from international front line. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has unexpectedly extended his visit to Russia, where he was meeting President Vladimir Putin for a suspected arms deal. Putin returned to Moscow after the summit, but Kim's visit would continue for several days. Peskov added, uh, without elaborating further, the North Korean leader is expected to oversee a display of Russian warships as well as visit uh, several factories and stop by the eastern city of Vladivostok on his way home. Putin and Kim on Wednesday had discussed uh, possibilities for military cooperation. Putin also gradually rather gratefully accepted an invitation from Kim to visit North Korea, a Kremlin spokesperson said. The U.S. has warned that Moscow is buying weapons from its war on Ukraine and any help would violate U.N. resolutions. Now to the further development we have. Uh, and uh, before that, uh, let's have a quick look into the highlights of the site. Welcome back. Uh, thank you for staying with us. Now we have remaining international headliners. 
aid teams are battling to help survivors and locate the dead five days after the devastating flooding hit eastern Libya. Thousands of people were killed when two dams burst after intense rainfall from Storm Daniel, washing away whole neighborhoods in the city of Adana. Figures of the number of dead vary from around 6,000 to 11,000 and the other thousands are still listed as missing. The Port City's mayor says the total could reach 20,000. Most of the deaths could have been avoided if warnings were issued. The UN's World Meteorological Organization says about 30,000 people have been left homeless. The International Organization for Migration says with the UN's humanitarian agency warning of the danger of disease from contaminated water. To the further development, the UK, France and Germany have announced that they will retain sanctions on Iran in an attempt to deter the country from selling drones and missiles to Russia. The 2015 Iran agreed in 2015 Iran agreed to a nuclear deal and under the term some sanctions are due to be lifted next month. But the European nations believe Iran breached the deal by enriching and storing uranium. Iran says that their move is illegal and provocative. The European powers announced that they would incorporate expiring UN sanctions into their own laws. Gold sales have sparkled in China despite price increase mainly thanks to demands from seasonal consumption and long-term investment. The international price of gold, which is widely considered a safe haven, safe uh, asset, have climbed up partly due to global economic growth concerns. The price of gold futures on China's Shanghai Futures exchange hit a 13 year high of about 64.31 US dollars per gram on Wednesday. In spite of the metal surprises, it is still popular among Chinese consumers. According to the China Gold Association, gold consumption in the country reached 554.88 tons in the first half of the year, up 16.37% from 2022. Workers of gold jewel stores in Beijing said they have received an increasing number of consumers since August and the best sellers are gold rings and bracelets. To the more updates before that, let's have a quick look into the highlights of the site. NASA has released a new image of a newborn star captured on the Wave Telescope. The image shows the star and the Hevig Haru object surrounding it. Hevig Haru objects are luminous regions that appear around the newborn stars and are formed when stellar winds or jets of gas from uh, shock waves that collide with the nearby gas and dust particles at high speed. This spectacular image of HS211 reveals an outflow from a class zero pro protoster and an infantile analog of our sun when it was no more than a few tens of thousands of years old and with the mass of 8% of the present day sun. Now we are moving on to spots. Preparations for the 19th Asian Games from high-tech traffic management to volunteer training 
are in full swing ahead of the events. Commencement in Hangzhou City in East China's Zhejiang province on September 23rd. In anticipation of a spike in tra traffic, the city has set out dedicated lanes for the games and uh, adopted a digital platform which uh, integrates uh, data from traffic police, road management, firefighting and emergency departments uh, to improve uh, traffic flow and uh, safety. Volunteers are also doing their part to prepare as they undergo training for venue cleanup, customer service and uh, other key tasks that aim to ensure all athletes and uh, spectators are left with positive memories. The Hangzhou Asian Game will run through October 8 and uh, will feature for 40 spots, 61 disciplines and 483 events in 54 competition and venues. Meanwhile, delegations attending the 19th Asian Games have also started arriving successfully in Hangzhou. The occasion marks China's third time hosting the Olympic Council of Asia's signature event following Beijing in 1990 and Guangzhou in 2010. With this, we come to the end of this news bulletin. But before we say goodbye, quick reminders of the headlines once again. Prime Minister Daha leaving for New York tomorrow to lead a 10 member Nepali delegation to the 70th session of the UN General Assembly. National Children's Day being observed today. President urges all three tires of government to implement legal and constitutional provisions on children's rights. North Korean leader Kim extends his visit to Russia by several days, expected to oversee a display of Russian warships and visit several factories. Aid teams battling to help survivors and look at dead five days after devastating floods hit eastern Libya. Up to 11,000 estimated to have been killed. And the reigning champion Sri Lanka beats Pakistan in a last ball thriller to reach the final of the Asia Cup 2023 to lock arms with India on Sunday. Well, this is all we have for this moment. Until our next bulletin, have a good day ahead and namaste.